Hi guys, welcome back to art class. This is Mrs. Poole and Holly. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hi. One of my favorite projects that we do at school are clay projects. I just think they're so fun. I like to get my hands dirty and I like to make a completely new shape out of my hands. And I am really bummed that we don't get to do our clay projects at the second half of school this year. So I decided that we're going to be doing a clay project today. And you might be thinking that, oh, I don't really have any clay. And don't worry, I'm going to show you some alternative materials that you could use in order to do a clay project. And if you would like to use something other than clay to make your project, that is okay too. Alternative means different. So I will show you some alternative clay sculpting materials and how to make them and what kind of projects you could make out of those materials. The element of art, which is the little parts that make up art projects that we're going to be discussing this week is texture. Texture is a word that describes how you can feel something with your finger, like bumpy, smooth, feathery, furry, or how something looks like it feels. So for example, if you draw a picture of a cat and you draw the texture of a fur, if you touch that piece of paper, it's gonna be smooth. But if you look at the paper, it's gonna look like it's furry. Real texture is the kind of texture that you can actually touch and feel. And visual texture is the kind of textures that you can only see with your eyes. Because we're going to be working with actual clay, we're going to be using real texture for this project. So we're going to be actually adding textures to our projects and that will be part of our goal. But, but first, first, it's, it's our, our history, history time. time. Hello, Vincent Van Gogh. Well, hello there. Today, we're going to be talking about the artist Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh is a Dutch painter. Dutch painters are from the country, the Netherlands. Vincent van Gogh was born into a family of ministers and artists. Before he decided to become an artist, he was a teacher sometimes, he was a minister like his parents sometimes, and when he turned to age 27, that is when he decided that he wanted to become an artist. When he first started out as an artist, he was interested in drawing pictures of people that work really hard, like farmers, and he used very dark and bold colors to express how they live. Here is one of his most famous paintings from his early years called The Potato Eaters. Vincent van Gogh had a few brothers and sisters, but he was most close to his brother Theo. Theo worked in an art gallery, that is a place that people can sell their artwork. He was very supportive of Vincent van Gogh's work, and tried really, really hard to sell his paintings. But not a lot of people were really interested in his work. As he developed his own style, he became influenced by the movement called Impressionism that uses a lot of short brush strokes that have a lot of texture. And he decided to move to Paris to study that type of art. And he became very close friends with the artist Paul Gauguin. After he moved to Paris and started to become influenced by Impressionists, he started to use brighter colors and also became more interested in painting portraits. Portraits are artwork of the faces of people. And a lot of times he could not find people to paint, so he painted a lot of self-portraits. Self-portraits are pictures of yourself. Then Vincent van Gogh decided to move to the south of France with his friend Paul Gauguin. At this house, Vincent van Gogh painted thousands of artwork. Sometimes he would complete a whole big painting in just one day. And his colors became more vibrant, his brush strokes became thicker, and he sometimes even painted directly from the tube onto the canvas, and it would take days for his paint to dry. He became so obsessed with his art that all he could think about was making art. Eventually, he forgot to eat sometimes. He, got, he kept getting in argument with his friend and roommate, Paul Gauguin. And sadly, he ended up in a mental institution and eventually passed away. 
Here are some of his fabulous works that he made during his life. Even though these artworks are some of the most famous paintings in the world today, we think that he only sold one painting while he was alive. He would be so surprised and proud if he could see how much his works are appreciated today. His paintings often have a lot of texture. His paintings have so much texture that a lot of times the painting looks like it's even moving. You can see the air and the people and the sky kind of moving in its own way. So for this week's art projects, we're going to be engaging with sculpture. Engage means to focus 100% on your work. And it is another important task of an artist. And it is something that Vincent van Gogh was very good at. We are also going to be applying texture to our sculptures, just like Vincent van Gogh did. Now, Vincent van Gogh applied texture to his paintings, and we're going to be applying texture to a sculpture, but we're still going to be exploring the same element of art. Here is the goal of this project. We're going to engage with sculpture that has texture. So you may make any type of sculpture that expresses texture. Texture is how something actually feels. And I would like you to use real texture, not just draw the texture on it for this project. For example, you could make a Play-Doh sculpture of a turtle and express the texture of the shell by scratching in some patterns. That is a way to express texture, texture through sculpture. If you know how to sew or would like to try it, you could try to make a stuffed animal of a cat that has a fur texture by using some furry fabric. You could make a sculpture of a troll using cardboard and express the texture of the hair using yarn or thread or something else that's fluffy. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you might be thinking, oh, but I don't have clay, I don't have fabric, I can't really make a sculpture. Don't worry, I'm going to show you in the next section some options that uses things that you might have at your house or you might be able to ask your parents to pick up at the grocery store next time they're out. The first example I'm going to show you is how to use Play-Doh to make a sculpture with texture. On our survey where you guys answered what art materials you have at your house, a lot of you guys said you have some kind of Play-Doh or dough. So the first example is simply using the Play-Doh to make a sculpture using texture. And I will also show you how to add a background to your sculpture. I will also be linking some recipes for how to make your own Play-Doh in the description box below. So if you don't have Play-Doh but would like to try some Play-Doh sculpting or dough sculpting, then you can look through the list and try and find a recipe that uses things that you have at your house. There's also some gluten-free recipes. So if you're not able to use flour or Play-Doh because you're allergic, there's some different options as well. The second sculpting material I'm going to show you is actually bread dough. So this is how to use bread to make your artwork. And you can, of course, eat it when you're finished. The third option I'm going to show you is how to make what is called paper smashé. Paper smashé is kind of like paper clay. So you can make your own clay using just paper, any kind of ripped up paper, scrap paper, and a little bit of glue, water, and flour and make your own clay. So I will show you how to make that kind of clay and also sculpt out of that as well. For your Play-Doh sculpture, you'll want to first gather some tools that can create different textures. Things from your house like combs, forks, spoons, brushes, those kinds of things would work just great. Now I'm making a little flat piece to test out my texture tools. You can use some pokey tools to stab your clay, or you could scratch your clay, or use some brush tools to poke into the clay or try and drag to make some different kind of textures. You can use a spoon to make different kinds of dents. Just try out whatever tool you have in your house. I am liking the little scale patterns I got from the end of the spoon, so I think I'm going to think about a project that I could use that one in. So I decided to make a mermaid using that scale 
texture. So I'm starting with a flat piece of clay and I have a cookie cutter that's shaped like a person and also a fish and I'm going to try and combine those two. But remember that you can make these shapes by yourself too. If you don't have cookie cutters, feel free to form it with your hands. That actually makes it better because you're doing it on your own. Now I'm getting my texture tool, which is the end of my spoon, and I'm going to press my real texture into my Play-Doh. I'm also using the end of the comb to add some extra textures. Now I'm going to use some smaller pieces to add details like the face and the hair. For the hair, I use what is called the extruder. It is a thing where you jam some clay in and push it out and it makes some skinny long shapes. And of course, you can always roll your own if you don't have an extruder. Here I'm adding some extra texture to each piece of the hair. And now I'm going to add the background. I just put my Play-Doh project on a piece of paper and I'm drawing things around my mermaid to show where my mermaid is. Next, I'm going to show you my bread dough sculpture. If you're using any kind of food, make sure you wash your hands with soap very carefully before you start. And then mix your ingredients according to the recipe, which I'll leave a recipe that I used for this project in the description box. But feel free to use any bread recipe that you or your family likes to use. If you would like to add color to your projects, you can also add some food coloring and make sure you mix and mix until everything is all smooth. Then we're going to start to sculpt it into the shape that you want it to be. I'm going to be doing a hedgehog, so I'm going to make the nose, and then I use scissors to make the pokey parts of the hedgehog. Feel free to use any tools that you have in your kitchen to try and make the texture of the animal or object that you're trying to make with your bread dough. And then I made the face, and the legs, and the tails. And you have to let the bread sit for a little bit until it expands. Here's how my hedgehog bread looks before it went into the oven. It's inside. Huh? Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that looks so good. You gonna try it? No, that was so good. You gonna try it? And we tried it, and it was actually pretty good. Here's a picture of the finished hedgehog after it went in the oven. And you can see that it expanded a little bit, so that's a little bit hard to see the face. But it was a really fun project to do. And lastly, we have our paper smashé project. For this project, you're going to just find any scrap pieces of paper you have at your house. It can be advertisements or paper that you're planning on recycling. And you're going to shred it into a container with your hand as small as you can. Once you have quite a bit of paper in your container, you're going to soak it into water for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can drain the water once the paper is all soft. Then you're going to take a wooden stick. I'm just using the back side of some spatulas. And you're going to smash the paper just like the name Paper Smashé says. Eventually, your paper is going to kind of turn into a crumbly paste. And at that point, you can add a little bit of flour. You don't have to add the flour, but the flour makes the paste a little bit stickier so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And then you'll want to add a little bit of liquid glue, which will help the paper stick together once you start molding it into your shape. You could look up a recipe for the exact amounts online, but I find that no matter how much you put in, it's still gonna work. So just try it out, it's gonna work just fine. And I'm mixing it all together. And the finished paper smashé paste looks kind of like this. If it's too watery, you can always squeeze it out too. And now all you have to do is mold your paper smashé paste into the shape that you would like to make. Paper smashé paste is naturally kind of lumpy because we're smashing it with our hands. So it makes a nice texture on its own. Hi Katie, don't eat my art project. Once it dried, I hot glued it onto a branch with some strings and I made a little mobile. Here is a recap of this week's lesson. 
we're going to be engaging with sculptures that expresses the idea of real texture. So you're going to focus, give it your 100% to first envision what your sculpture is going to be, what kind of texture you're going to express, and what kind of materials you would like to use and can find at your house. Just to be super clear, you don't have to use one of the three examples that I did. You can come up with your own art medium if you like. Second, you're going to create your work with traditional or alternative sculpture materials, things that you have at your house, like clay or Play-Doh, or some of the homemade sculpting materials that I just showed you, or from the internet or books that you might have. Third, if it makes sense to do so, like my Play-Doh example, please add a background. Adding a background to your work often makes your work more interesting to look at and also gives it more of a story. And last but not least, please make sure you photograph your work and send it to me through Artsonia if you can, or email or Zoom meetings if you're not able to go through Artsonia. And if you have any questions or need suggestions about any of the projects or examples that I showed you, please make sure you email me. I'm very excited to see what you guys come up with. Have a good week.